For patients with advanced tumors within the abdominal cavity, the operative technique of cytoreductive surgery with the administration of hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy is a therapeutic option of growing popularity within the United States. The goals of this surgical procedure are to, to completely examine all tissue within the abdominal cavity and to resect all visible disease. For patients with high-grade tumors, the inability to resect all visible disease should lead to the uh, decision not to proceed with the intraperitoneal chemotherapy. However, for patients with low-grade tumors, so-called mucinous tumors of the appendix, if disease can be debulked down to a stage of one centimeter or less, effective penetration of the tumor with chemotherapy allows for patients to be perfused with incomplete uh, cytoreduction of all tumor. The goals here at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center are to minimize the amount of bowel resected and to thus minimize the amount of anastomoses or rejoining uh, of the bowel which any patient undergoes. Additionally, the use of common sense is incredibly important in the decision-making process. Patients with whose disease is far too advanced for this therapy should have that decision made early in the operative procedure so that the toxicity is not encountered without any therapeutic benefit. For patients with high-grade tumors in whom preoperative imaging with the form of CAT scans and occasionally MRIs do not permit adequate assessment of the volume of disease, we favor the use of laparoscopy early on to allow minimal incision and minimal uh, dissection to evaluate the extent of disease and to evaluate patients for potential therapy. The goal of, the, the goal of all of our interventions, however, is to, to define those patients who have resectability, resectable disease prior to the initiation of a, of a trip to the operating room. The steps with, of cytoreductive surgery include a midline laparotomy, which often extends the length of the abdomen. The omentum, which is a large, uh, which hangs off of the stomach, is completely resected with all attempts made at preserving the gastroepiplocade or the blood vessels which supply the stomach. If the spleen is involved, a partial splenectomy is not possible, and so the entire spleen is removed. A complete lysis of adhesions or removal of all scar tissue from previous operations and, all, and also for scar from the presence of tumor is important so that it allows us complete visualization of all the small and large bowel and to ensure that no disease is uh, not examined and removed. After completely examining the small bowel, we then ru uh, run the large intestine or examine the large intestine for the presence of disease from its origin in the right lower quadrant of the abdomen all the way down to the rectum. Tumor is removed from the blood supply or mesentery of the large intestine, as well as from the pericolic gutters and the, the uh, appendices epiploase, or the borders of the large intestine. At this point, the pelvis is addressed. The ureters, which drain the urine from the kidney into the bladder, are completely inspected throughout their entire course, and removal of the lining of the pelvis, known as a pelvic peritonectomy, is performed when there is evidence of disease within the pelvis. A frequent site of disease is the upper abdomen. The left side is usually addressed first with examination of the um, peritoneum or the lining overlying the left diaphragm. The diaphragm is a, is a very thin muscle between the abdomen and the chest and is a frequent site of implantation of disease. Subsequently, we re examine the remainder of the abdomen with areas that are not associated directly with any uh, gastrointestinal function readily removed is, if necessary. That includes the falciform ligament and the gastrohepatic ligament, two fatty structures which exist within the abdomen but do not, which do not have any vital function. At this point, the liver is removed from the right upper quadrant with great care and examination of the right diaphragm is performed. For patients who need to uh, have this disease removed, a complete peritonectomy of the right upper quadrant is, a diaphragm is often required um, and can lead to a resection of part of the diaphragm. If this is accomplished, a chest tube may be placed in the chest of the right side in order to completely drain any fluid from inside the abdomen. The abdominal wall below the incision 
frequently is a site of disease, and this can be easily uh, disease here can be easily removed as the, the uh, intra-abdominal contents and organs do not reside in this area. This is a picture of what the abdomen looks like after the surgical removal of tumor is completed, and the abdomen has been closed, and the catheters which instill the chemotherapy which recirculates are present. At present, uh, two to four catheters are used to inflow the chemotherapy, and the outflow is accomplished by two larger catheters. The goal of the inflow of the chemotherapy is a, is a distribution of the chemotherapy throughout the entirety of the abdomen, and the catheters are placed in the, most, in the most deeply seated areas of the abdomen, including the upper right and left quadrants, as well as the pelvis, and deep behind the large intestine. The outflow catheters are placed superiorly so that it ensures complete exposure of the abdomen to the chemotherapy, and we use temperature probes not only to assure that the chemotherapy is evenly distributed, but also to ensure that temperatures do not rise to levels which make uh, the procedure unsafe and increase intestinal toxicity. During this time, the, inc the incision is closed. However, the patient remains completely asleep throughout the entirety of this procedure. In order to facilitate complete exposure of the abdomen to chemotherapy, the chemotherapy is dissolved in approximately three liters of fluid, which will run throughout the abdomen for 100 minutes. Once the temperatures reach 100 degrees, uh, sorry, once the temperatures reach 40 degrees, the, the chemotherapy is administered for the first 60 minutes. After 60 minutes, an additional smaller dose of chemotherapy is added to the circuit, which allows for uh, an equivalent dose to be administered throughout the 100 minutes of the procedure. During the procedure, gentle, ag gentle agitation of your abdomen will be performed through, ge through uh, gentle massaging. This allows distribution of the chemotherapy throughout the abdomen and prevents any pockets of chemotherapy or heated drug from uh, staying in specific areas of the abdomen and not being perfused throughout the entirety of the abdomen. At the end of the uh, procedure, the abdomen is reopened and the abdomen is then uh, cleansed with four liters of saline. It does not have chemotherapy. This is a picture of our uh, circuit which shows a patient lying on the bed and a, a roller pump in the um, right, lower, right, right lower portion of the uh, picture, which is what recirculates the chemotherapy through a uh, heat, heat exchanger. The goal is to keep the temperature between 41 and 42 degrees and not be above 42 and a half degrees. At the completion of the procedure, the abdomen is open, all catheters are removed, and the temperature probes are removed. Any intestine which has been resected will then be re repaired and placed so the a full continuity of the intestinal tract is completed at the end of the operation. For patients who have large intestinal anastomoses, so sewing of one piece of large intestine to the other, uh, a protective loop ileostomy or an ostomy bag for your small intestine will be placed for approximately six to eight weeks. Previous experience has told us that this allows for better wound, for better healing of the intestine and prevents leaks and uh, uh, pelvic in infections. This is a picture of the operating room showing the large operative team which is involved during this procedure, which includes an anesthesia team, a perfusionist who runs the perfusion pump, which circulates the chemotherapy, an operative surgeon, a surgical resident, and an operating room staff team. In summary, good patient selection is vital for this technology. The use of this, disease, this uh, therapy for patients who have resectable disease but have a high likelihood of having disease come back in their abdomen has been associated with good long-term outcomes in a large number of patients. It is a large surgical procedure, and there's a lot of fluid administered, and, and it is a, uh, a significant stress on the body. So patients who have had significant uh, other medical problems need to be thoroughly evaluated before placed in such a large surgical protocol. This nature of the surgery is more aggressive than traditional surgeries with a goal of resecting disease that is not located in a single organ. Um, this combined with the high pec surgery uh, elevates the potential risks of the procedure, but when performed in high volume centers um, with a constancy of protocol, allows it to be done in a very safe and effective manner. 
as this is a relatively new and innovative technique, we continue to follow our patients in the post-operative period very closely to monitor them for side effects, but also to uh, monitor them for signs of recurrence so that we can uh, rapidly intervene when it is necessary.